Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. A few years ago, I had my hands in helping to design the Cooler Master TD500 Mesh. Here, we have the brand new TD500 Mesh V2 with quite a few improvements and some fixes for some suggestions I've had over the last few years with Cooler Master cases. What we're gonna do today is, obviously, I did a build in it. I wanted to test the thermals with the new TD500 V2, just for my own sanity, just to know what is actually going on with it. And I'm gonna show you a few of those new things through the video. But first, I need to put it together. Let's do a build thing. Been a while, ladies and gents. We need to visit our friends over at Peel Corp. Let's see how we go for a peel today. Ooh, that sounds good.
let's take a look at the thermals. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the thermals are not too bad. Be aware that when we thermal test like this, it is a synthetic stress test. When you're gaming or using applications for the things that you do, it's probably not going to get anywhere near as hot as this. And yeah, I, I have to say that because a lot of that context gets missed with thermal testing. The point is to smash it as hard as possible. And yeah, most of the time, you're just not gonna be pushing it this hard for a long, long period of time. And if you are, it's gonna be fine. Which kind of leads me into some of the choices that I made with the build. Now, usually I would gloss over all of this and say, hey, there's like a PC pickle list in the description down below. But I wanted to talk a little bit about this new cooler from Cooler Masters, the MA824 Stealth. And it's supposed to be like a competitor to the Noctua D15. And I think thermally, it may compete. We're gonna come back and test this. I wanna know now, now that we've seen this thing in the flesh, whether or not it is better than the Noctua cooler. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for that because we're gonna find out. There's also another thing that I wanted to address. I was finishing putting this together and I was doing the RGB configuration and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I use this new ProArt GPU, but I forgot I had the ProArt motherboard to go with it. <laughs> because the, the truth is, I didn't know what GPU I was going to use. I was going to do like a 4090, but yeah, it's, this case is not that wide and I would have just had to bend the living hell out of that 12 volt high power connector. And I just didn't want to do that. And I was like, hey, the ProArt GPU would suit the whole vibe of this PC. So I just went and used it. And then I thought to myself, I should have just done the ProArt from the beginning. Right, that would have been smart, idiot. <laughs> Anyways, if there's any other parts that you guys are interested in, there's a PC pickle list down below in the description, but there's also little cards during those sections of the video. So if you wanna see what that is, you can rewind back and it just has like a, a little card, but there's also a link in the description. All right, what do I think of the TD500 Mesh V2? Well, let's talk about the things that they've changed. First of all, the top panel of the case. The original TD500 did not allow you to remove that whole top panel. Why this is good is because if you're installing a radiator up the top or fans up the top, you can just remove that case when you're putting all your other components in and come back and do it later. And then you don't have to worry about clearance. You don't have to worry about managing the cables if that top panel's there, if you've got like a thick radiator, you can run all your cables and then put the radiator in after. So that makes it a lot easier. I do like that. One of the biggest complaints I've had with Cooler Master cases over the last few years as well is a lot of these cases in this price bracket, they have that PSU cutout. I know you guys are like me and I always think to myself, I don't care what power supply I've got in there unless the system works. I don't wanna look at the label of the power supply on the side of the case. So what Cooler Master has done is pretty easy fix, just included a little plastic panel to cover that over. So you can either have it or not have it. It's completely up to you. And for me, I would just leave the panel on. I don't like to look at power supplies. There's a few little quality of life updates that they've added to the V2. There's an RGB controller now. They had one before, I think, or was it just like a splitter? But this one just has like a little RGB controller. It's got motherboard pass through, it's got Connections for your fan power, it's DC powered only. They should have just done PWM. I kind of don't get why companies won't just put PWM hubs in because with that you could do DC or PWM. It doesn't really matter. Just, just fix that for V3, please. <laughs> then we're good. But other than that, the case is fine. The build quality is about what you'd see with all of the Cooler Master cases in this price bracket because the main thing is with a lot of these Cooler Master cases, and this has been happening for about four and a half, maybe five years, but actually probably longer, probably longer. They're using the same base chassis and then they're adding little things to it. So the TD500 mesh, the original one, the motherboard tray and the rest of the chassis is mostly the same. They added a little bit of height for that removable top panel, as I mentioned as well quality of life, little things like that. They first did that about two years ago. I can't remember what case it was. I'm sure it'll come to me at another time. But yeah, since that, I was like, hey guys, can you do that again? But on every case, and they, they must have listened, I suppose. I didn't have anything to do with the V2, but I did have feedback about the original one from the original blah, 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 blah. Okay, you get it. 
All right, if you're interested in the Cooler Master TD500 Mesh V2, they're going for around 99 US dollars with the included addressable RGB fans up the front or around 159 Aussie dollars here down under. Let us know what you think about this new version of the TD500 Mesh. The original case was wildly popular and it's kind of nice to see these quality of life improvements from the original TD500. I'm not trying to be biased here because I had my hand in designing the original one, but yeah, these are just nice little additions and I think the pricing isn't too bad either because you've got those included addressable RGB fans, but please let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, do that darn old thing down there, hit the like button, do all of those things, notifications to see when all of our videos come out. If you like the music you've heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there, down below. Got lots of new music coming. Ooh, I'm so excited. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I am your boy Nick with Gear Seekers, or as uh, LMG calls us, Fear Seekers. <laughs> you peek, we seek, and we'll catch you next time with another fantastic build. Bye now. See you later. Goodbye. Thank you very much for watching.